Hey everyone, welcome to this tutorial where we're going to start with a brand new Android project and see it all the way through to publishing on Google Play. My name is Rahul and I'm a software engineer and YouTuber who loves teaching. I think the best way to learn something is to build things. And so we're going to build a memory game app to learn Android development with Kotlin. As you go through this, if you have any questions or feedback, I'd love to connect with you. I'm at rpande1234 on YouTube and Twitter. The memory game is the perfect way to cover a lot of core Android concepts. We'll talk about dynamic layouts, multiple screens, image loading, and persistence with Firebase. Along the way, I'll share some practical tips and tricks about app development and my checklist that I always go through before publishing any app onto Google Play. I'm going to assume you have some programming experience, and if you have a basic familiarity with Android, that's an added bonus. We're going to be using a programming language called Kotlin, which is now the recommended way to develop Android apps. You're welcome to follow along if you're new to Kotlin, or even if you're new to programming, but I'd recommend that you go through a quick Kotlin intro first. Once you're done building the app, share it on social media with the hashtag MyMemory. And don't forget to tag me so I can check it out as well. Let me do a quick demo of the memory app that we're going to build. This game is really popular. I played it a lot growing up, and I'm sure it's familiar for many of you. The objective is to try and find pairs with matching images. So here I have two cards which don't match. When I flip over a third card, then the other two will flip back down. And the reason this is called memory is because once you've identified where an image is, you have to use your memory or concentration to find out where have you previously seen that card. So here, I know the matching flower image is over there, and now I can continue until I have found all of the pairs. Once I found all the pairs in the game, then the confetti falls and I have that message, and we can also see information about the game at the bottom of the screen. In the menu, I can tap this button to restart the game, and that shows me new random images. And I can also choose a different size memory board. So right now we're showing an eight card game, which is four pairs. And I can make it a little bit harder by choosing the hard version, which is 24 cards. And so now you can see how we are dynamically changing the size of each memory card in order to fill up the phone width and height. One other thing we can do is download a custom game. So this is a really cool part of the game, which is that anyone in the world can create their own memory game with photos from their phone. And we can actually play that. So for example, I created a custom memory game called Bitmoji. So Bitmoji is um, my Bitmoji character, my cartoon, doing different activities. And so now, if you flip over a card, you can see these are images from my phone that I uploaded into a custom memory game. And we can play the game like normal, where we're trying to match up images. And finally, of course, you can also create your own custom memory game. So I'm going to choose to create an easy game, which means I have to upload four images. This will now launch the existing gallery app on your phone, and I can select photos from my phone. So I have these very adorable photos of corgis. I want to give this game name the name of corgi and tap save. And what this is doing is it's persisting these images to Firebase. And once that's done, now we can actually play our custom game. So you can see the images of the corgis that we have here. And the cool thing is now I can share this game name, corgi, with anyone in the world and they can play the same game. So there's a lot of really cool concepts that we're gonna cover in the process of building this, and I'm really excited to get started with you. I'm going to make it really easy for you to follow along with me, which means I'm gonna keep copy paste to a minimum, and the only tools that you really need are Android Studio and a working emulator or a phone, an Android phone. I'll also leave a link in the description to the GitHub repository, which contains all the code, so you can feel free to reference that as well. Here's a picture cloud representation of the main concepts we'll be covering. So first off, we're gonna become very familiar with Android Studio. We're also gonna be talking about vector icons. So Android Studio will help us to create a bunch of these vector images that will be used as a default memory game images. We'll also talk about views and measuring out how much space to allocate with the content, the padding, and the margin which lives outside the view. All that content will live largely inside of a recycler view, which is how we're displaying the grid of memory cards. So a recycler view is a very core component in Android, and we'll talk about the different parts that make up a recycler view. We're also going to be dealing with two Firebase services. The first is cloud storage, which is what we'll be storing our images. 
Second is Cloud Firestore, which will be the database associating our game name to a list of image URLs. And then finally, we're going to spend a bit of time talking about how do we create a release app that we can then publish onto Google Play and also talk about how to optimize your Google Play store listing. I'll leave a link to the published app in the Google Play Store in the description so you can download it and get a better feel for what exactly we're going to build. All right, I hope you're excited to get to work. In the next segment, we are going to construct the layout for the main screen or main UI for our application. Mm -hmm.